Don't you just hate it when you go to record a video and you realize you forgot to charge all your battery packs and they're all almost dead. Last week I had a really cool experience. I got to spend the night with Michael Bush. No, not like that, you sickos. My club actually flew him out to Portland to speak and he went and spoke last Saturday to the Hood River beekeepers and then I was invited to a living room chat that evening out to the host's house and spent the evening there chatting and just talking about everything, even bees. Um, and then I spent the night there and then the next day he came out to Portland Urban Beekeepers and spoke to our club and it was a really cool experience. I learned a lot. I've read his whole web page, I've got his book and I've read through that, but there was still things that I learned through his presentations and even though his presentations are all online too just having him there and speaking to you in person and being able to ask questions was an unforgettable experience i don't know if you know this but he is my beekeeping hero um, when i was first learning how to become a beekeeper and reading up about it before i even got bees the very first book i got was called beekeeping for dummies and in that book, it talked a lot about all the different medications you have to apply during certain timings and events. And I read through that and I, I thought, there's just no way I'm going to be able to be a beekeeper if I have to do all of that stuff. That's just too much for me. I can't keep up with it. And I didn't like the idea of applying all these medications and chemicals in the hive. So I pretty much gave up on the idea of being a beekeeper. And then I gave it another month and started researching online and found his website, um, among a few others. Uh, it looks like the battery's dying, so i got to make this quick. Anyway, it was his website, among others, uh, including the Backwards Beekeepers, and, um, that convinced me that I should read a different book uh, called The um, Complete Idiot's Guide to Beekeeping. And that t teaches all about treatment-free beekeeping. Michael Bush's website talks about treatment-free beekeeping. So go, go check it out. Take a look at it. Today I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour of my apiary and see what's happening there. Give you a, 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 an update on what happened over the winter. I did not have a good winter. I lost about 60% of my hives. Um, and that was mainly because uh, last year I didn't have a lot of time to spend with the bees. I ended up just overwintering older queens and swarms that I caught. And those tend to have uh, less of a success rate. So this year I'm going to be trying some different things things I learned at Michael Bush's seminar about raising your own queens um, and overwintering nukes. I have tried this in the past couple of years, overwintering nukes. Uh, I'm going to try some different things this year and I'm also going to try to raise more queens and that might help to improve the overwinter successes. Right now I have to go and put supers on the hive. It's May, almost May 1st, it, May 1st is tomorrow and the blackberry is about to bloom here and blackberry is our main nectar flow. So I want to get the supers on so that they can have room to store that honey. At this location, I had two hives overwinter and die. The one on the left was actually three years old and it was originally caught as a swarm in a swarm trap. They lived three years and then died this past winter. The one on the right was a swarm that I caught last year and did not survive the winter. So these two hives have been cleaned up and I baited them with lemongrass oil to attract some swarms. All right, this location, there used to be two hives over here on this stand over winter, and there was a third on this one. This one used to be a nuke, just a, a two deep, not, sorry. <laughs> this one used to be a five by five nuke, five over five uh, over winter. And it, it was the only one that survived, and you can see that it's doing really well. In fact, early March, it was booming and exploding and looking like this in early March. I had to move them into uh, 10 over 10 over 10, three boxes. Uh, the other two I've already cleaned up and taken those home. There was no honey in those, a uh, little bit actually, but I gave it to these ones. Today I need to reconfigure this hive. I was hoping to just add a super on top and minimal intervention, but
but due to this um, overcrowding, I'm concerned that there might be either swarm cells in there. So I want to take a look. Also, I want to open up the bottom here. Uh, this is a solid bottom board and the only ventilation they have are two holes in some of these boxes. So I want to take off the reducer or the block that I have there to improve ventilation because I think that they might be getting too hot in there. So I got to light up the smoker and get my super and get things ready to take this box apart. Okay, I already gave them a little bit of smoke. I'm gonna open them up here. I'm recording this on my cell phone because my regular camera battery is dead. I don't know how long my cell phone battery is gonna last. So I'm gonna try to work quickly. That's why I've got gloves. I don't typically use gloves, so I work a little slower without gloves, but don't have that luxury today. While I'm going through each box, I'm going to look for queen cells on the bottom of the frames to see if they're going to swarm. So looking at the underside of the frames, there, there's a queen cell right there. Um, looks like a little peanut hanging off the bottom. These are queen cups here. This is just some burr comb. But I do see at least one queen cell. I'm not going to remove that. It's a bad idea to remove queen cells because it's possible they already swarmed. If I remove that queen cell, then they'll be hopelessly queenless. Uh, but they may be preparing to swarm. So what I'm going to do is go home and grab a swarm trap and bring it here and hope that they uh, moved into the swarm trap. And then I don't have to chase down a swarm. Hold up there, change of plans. Setting up a swarm trap is certainly one way to go, but I changed my mind. I went ahead and put everything back together. I added the fourth box to the stack as originally planned. Then as I was driving over to my next out yard, I realized that I could take care of those queen cells with an even better plan. I could put them into mating nukes instead of waiting for a swarm. I went ahead and finished things up with all my other out yards, then brought back a couple mating nukes to this location. I carefully went through each box looking for more queen cells, and to my good fortune, found three combs with at least one queen cell each. I also saw signs that they had already swarmed. There was no sign of a laying queen, so I gave each mating nuke a comb with a queen cell, and left a queen cell in the mother hive too. I'll come back in four weeks and check on the queens to see if they hatched and mated. There used to be three hives here, one there, one there, and uh, one back there, and this one died over the winter. This one did well, but it survived, but it doesn't seem to be really particularly strong. It's hard to tell in the shadow here, but there's only a few bees coming in and out. They may not need the extra box yet. I'll just take a peek under the hood and see what they need. This one over here seems to be doing really well. And I'll be adding a fourth box onto here today. All right, I added the fourth box onto this hive. And as I suspected, this other hive wasn't extremely strong. They're alive and doing just fine. They're just not strong. And they've only filled out uh, six of these 10 frames up in the top box. And they're using the second box not much on the third box down. Um, so I'm not going to add anything to them today. They're not ready for it. Just going to change out that top cover. I was using one of these quilt boxes and took that off. Put back the Vivaldi board is what this is called. It's like an inner cover that's three inches deep. It's supposed to help with ventilation. I'm not convinced it does, but it's my inner cover and that's what I use. All right, last location today. The hive on the left did not survive the winter. This was a hive that I had split a couple years ago. They overwintered nicely, but didn't survive this past winter. And you can see the bottom just clogged up full of bees, dead bees there. Um, don't know why, I have to open it up and find out. But they had other entrances, so it's not like they couldn't get out. Uh, the other hive on the right was a swarm that I caught last year, and it's doing just fine. Survived the winter and bringing in 
a lot of pollen I see, and they're ready for a new box, it looks like. So I'll be adding a fourth box today. Well, going through this dead out, I don't see... It's hard to tell what killed them. There's no honey in here, but that doesn't mean they starved uh, because I'm seeing signs of robbing. Robbing looks like this when the comb has bits that are chewed out. That's where honey was and the robbers come and they don't take their time to, oops, they don't take their time to delicately remove the honey. They just chew it all out. Uh, so the fact that there's no honey doesn't really mean a lot in this case. Um, it does stink in here. It smells moldy, um, not like foul brood. So I'm not concerned about that. Lots of dead bees. There was a good pile of bees on the bottom of the hive. Um, so it's possible that they did starve. Sometimes a pile of dead bees on the bottom can indicate starvation. They had a lot of honey going into winter, so I can't imagine why they would have starved. But sometimes that happens, especially late winter uh, or early spring. When there's no nectar and they're starting to build up again, they'll die. But if that were the case, I would probably also see signs of brood, which I don't see. Let me go through a couple more boxes here, see if I can see any brood. I don't see a cluster anywhere in here, so uh, it's hard to say if there was, if they were starting to build up or if they died earlier. Uh, it is rather moldy. I didn't use a proper quilt box for this hive. I just put burlap on the bottom of the Vivaldi board and then put um, hive or I put wood chips inside that and I think that I don't get quite enough moisture absorption that way. I don't know if I'll continue to do that because it didn't seem to really um, help here. There's quite a bit of mold but I don't really see water or condensation in the combs. Looks like I'm getting closer to what was the cluster here and there's a lot of I see wax moth damage in here. I'll show you what that looks like. All this web. So it looks like they did try to raise some brood. Um, but this is all wax moth. Here's a wax moth worm. Right there. Let's see if I can see it in the camera. There's some wax moth damage and a little larva wax moth worm. Uh, all this brood does indicate that they were probably trying to start to build up but didn't have enough resources. So maybe this is a case of starvation. doesn't smell like foul brood. Foul brood smells like uh, somebody left their dirty socks in the gym bag for a week. This just smells like mold. And it's really damp and gross. Yeah, they, they really seem to try to build up. So this is probably a late winter starvation. There's what remains of the cluster. On this frame, looks like they were trying to raise some drone brood. That's all drone brood there. But also a lot of robbing. You can see where the robbers came in and took the honey from this section. Um, it's all chewed out, all the wax is missing. So they ran out of food, probably starved, and then the robbers came in and finished them off. Finished off what honey was in here. And then the wax moth took hold 
after the fact. Wax moth doesn't kill a hive. Um, a weak hive usually shows signs of wax moth, but a strong hive can keep the worms out under control. Mm -hmm.